In this video, I'll be going over a short example in computing the stationary distribution of a page rank like discrete time Markov chain, or DTMC. First, let's talk about what a stationary distribution is. The stationary distribution of a DTMC is a vector, commonly called pi, with the same amount of entries as there are states in the DTMC. Each of these entries is the long run likelihood that the DTMC is at the state given by that entry's index. The example we have here of a stationary distribution, one thirds, two thirds, corresponds to a DTMC with a pair of states in which the long run likelihood that we are at the first state is one and three, and the likelihood that we are at the second state is two and three. We might reach such a stationary distribution from this state diagram, which should make intuitive sense as we are going from A to B twice as much as we are going from B to A. And the long run likelihood that we are at B is twice that of the long run likelihood that we are at A. Here's an example of a scenario in which you might want to find the stationary distribution of a DTMC. You're making a search engine and want to rank web pages based on the links between them. Web pages that are more frequently linked by each other, uh, web, web pages that are more likely to have relevant information. Um, and so you want to order them by the long run likelihoods found in the stationary distribution. In the example, we have page A with links to B and C, B with links to A and D, C with links to D and E, D with links to A and E, and E with links to B and D. This is kind of hard to visualize, so we'll make a diagram. Here's the diagram. We could solve this with the cut method, which I demonstrated in another one of my videos, but since this diagram is a little more complex, we'll be using a matrix to represent it. Here's the matrix. It's full of 0.5s and zeros because each of the states happens to only have links to two other states. If one had links to three other states, for instance, its row would have thirds in it. Now we simply need to solve the actual equation pi equals pi p. This is simply some elementary algebra and a little linear algebra. We take the transpose of the entire equation and then subtract over the p transpose, pi transpose term. After that, we can factor out the pi transpose and then realize that pi transpose will be the null space of i minus p transpose, as it is the solution to the equation ax equals zero for matrix a equal to i minus p transpose. Now, in order to solve this family of solutions for pi, we need to recall that the sum of the entries of pi has to be equal to one. This will give us a unique solution defined as shown. We multiply the transpose of the family of solutions by the vector of ones, and then divide the vector by a constant so that the entries sum to one. So we're done with the Linalge part, but now we need to actually solve this for our p. By hand, this is a huge pain, and so it's better to use either MATLAB or Octave or Wolfram Alpha or what have you to do this instead. Otherwise, you'll almost definitely make a mistake somewhere, and it'll be hard to troubleshoot. Here's MATLAB code to solve for pi. Well, really, it's pi transpose, using the linear algebra expression that we had from before. We define p, and then it just works. The i5 term is the fifth dimensional identity matrix. If you want to make a generalized piece of code for this, all you should need to do is make the identity matrix size depend on p as well as the size of the vector of ones. And so, with our MATLAB calculations, we get the results as shown. Ranking the pages from highest to lowest gives d, a, b, e, c as the order that you should display the pages. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. If you haven't yet, take a couple of minutes and check out my video on the cut method, another very useful way to calculate the, st the standard distribution of simpler DTMCs.